yes, the Gullah culture is truly ubiquitous in the South, even in places like Hardyville, a small little town, nice and quaint, just a few miles from Beaufort, where I stayed and met with some of the nicest people, like Dollar General store manager Nathaniel Wright, or just Nate. If I were to ask you, are you related to the Gullah culture, the Gullah people? Yeah, I am. Um, you are what? Related to them. You related to the Gullah people, I, the I Gullah know, culture? I, I know I am. Now, how far back, I don't know, but pretty much everybody around here has some kind of root tied into the Gullah people, family. Nate was born and raised right here in Hardyville, which is also known as Little Savannah, or Slowville. <laughs> because it's nice and slow in the, in the yes, living is easy? Yes, it is, it is. Oh, okay. It's pretty much easy, it's very easy. Hardyville is not exactly traditionally known as Gullah country, but it really doesn't matter because the non-tangible elements, the spirit of Gullah, permeates the walls of any store, house, or village. Nate says it's about knowing who you are and your traditions. The heritage, the root, the, everything from the upbringing, from the different um, planning and um, the different foods and everything. Everything that encompasses your beginning. Yeah, my thing is, like my family, my mom always told me, you know, if you don't know where you're from, you're not going to know where you're going. The Gullah people, the history and the heritage rolls down the waterlined highways and roads of the southeast and on to the shores, places and people who, like Nate, keep the spirit alive. Ladies, don't keep them pocketbooks on the floor. You never have no money. Mm -hmm. Just an old Gullah get you believe. Yes, the many beliefs that may be in our own narratives. We just didn't know that they originated before our mothers and grandmothers and that they came to the U.S. from Africa. Tour guide Al Miller in Savannah, Georgia, keeps the spirit alive by sharing what he knows about all the sayings and goings of the Gullah Island. New Year's Day, never let that woman be the first to enter the house. It must be a man. For over 20 years, he's been one of the leading tour guides of the Gullah Lowland and Highlands and the owner of Sights and Insights Tours since 1993. Miller says his love of the Gullah culture and its people started early. It all extends from high school when I studied South Carolina history. I was just fascinated with all this history about Charleston because Charleston was actually the beginning, even though today Columbia is the capital. Tour by tour, Al Miller has passed on historical and cultural information that is important and a bit interesting. It was years ago to go to the bathroom in, the slop jar, the pecan, the piss pot, okay? Now, a lot of whites called it the honey bucket, the honey pot, the thunder jug, the chamber pot, and then some call it the potty. The sophisticated whites in this city call this unnecessary. That sounds good, doesn't it? Bring me the necessary. The necessary. So there are the beliefs, the mores, and traditions. Then there are the beliefs and the language itself mixed in with a little Southern pride. For example, Miller was born in Mullins, South Carolina, a little town north of Charleston, so in some ways he would be seen as an outsider and referred to in that manner. So the locals look at me and say, Look, I am a Benya, you are come ya. See, a Benya means that you came here, come ya means that you came here. The language is an emic term known as Geechee, also called Sea Island Creole. This way of speaking is related to Jamaican Patois, Barbadian dialect, Bahamian dialect, Belizean Creole, and the Creole language of Sierra Leone in West Africa. It's a mixture of speech patterns, and it sounds that way. Gal, where you come ya for? That means, what are you here for? You here to take a tour, okay? Yeah. Now. When we go into a lot of these old black neighborhoods, guess what they like to say, gal? Them tools come us a weed neighborhood. I like they ain't want to be mopping from that now some way. Meaning those tourists coming in our neighborhoods, I guess if they don't want to speak to us, they must be northerners. The meanings and interpretations of Gullah and Geechee have varied, but Miller says it's all about location, location, location. See, it's just that Gala and Geechee were more prevalent along the South Carolina and along the Georgia coast. So if you live closest to the ocean, you're more considered to be a saltwater Geechee or a lowland Geechee. If you live farther away from the coast, then you are considered to be a highland Geechee or a freshwater Geechee. Mm. And this is why a lot of blacks find that word to be derogatory. Because mm. so many outsiders look at those from Gala Geechee as being ignorant, stupid, backwards, silly. 
but they were anything but. Like other slaves who came to the U.S., the Africans who made up the Gullah people were brought here for their excellent skills and intelligence when it came to crop production, the production and use of indigo, fishing skills, and overall intelligence and know-how to live and prosper off of the land. Tasks, skills, and intelligence that provided the very survival of the slave owners and early European settlers. They weren't ignorant. They were Africans in a new place who spoke a particular language and provided essential byproducts that helped develop America. But just like Nate, Miller says, it's not only about the culture, it's also about the palate. Just the culture itself, uh, the food, the way of life, um, um, these, all these practices and, and beliefs that's just been passed down from one generation to the next. Well, I wanted to experience both more of the culture and definitely more of the food. So I headed to two places I knew I could get both, the Gullah Grub and the Gullah Festival. First, getting something great to eat, 